an effortless hack to rip up and down your fingerboard, tons of new news, and many plans and schemes revealed. Metal Base Monday. Much to talk about and reveal this week, so let's dive in quick. First up, uh, my EP from my self-titled project, Voice of Descent, where I played and did everything, engineered it, I had taken out of distribution for a little while and uh, wanted to do a little retooling and things, is officially back up. So thanks to everybody who showed interest and, you know, kind of wondered where it went and disappeared off Spotify and whatnot. I'm going to post a link to that down below, but it's on Apple, all that kind of good stuff. So if you want to check it out or continue to listen, it is back up and available. Uh, the instrumental segues in between, though, uh, I did take out of the streaming thing. It, it didn't seem to make sense and people were having trouble understanding whether it was an instrumental album or anything. So I'm going to keep that just for directly downloaded copies or purchases or if somebody goes and grabs a CD. So they're still around. It's just you got to go back to an actual copy for the full thing at this point. But those songs from the EP are up and the lead song off of it that there's the video for called Hellbent. This week, patrons, you will be getting a breakdown of all the stems for the instrumentals of that song. That's the song we're basically going to retool and rewrite in the recording and engineering tutorial that uh, I've already started for patrons, starting with songwriting, and we're going to be moving on to that next. But you'll get a breakdown of all the individual instruments to hear them, hear how they sound outside of the mix, and then we're going to do a live stream and talk about them. Looking forward to that. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So if you would like to be a patron and get some of this stuff and help support the channel and everything, uh, links are below to subscribe, star, and Patreon. It's always much appreciated, and as always, thank you to my patrons that are already on. A few new ones this week, and uh, you guys are awesome. Again, always appreciate the support. And if uh, you're not able to be a patron right now, and that's totally cool, and you just want to buy old Uncle Rodney a cup of coffee, I even take crypto. So if you want to toss a little bit in the coffee jar down there, toss me a few Bitcoin or anything else, it's always a, just a token, but it's always appreciated. So, not only that, but uh, my deeper go-over of the PV Sarzo base is going to be popping up this week. That's going to be on Wednesday. And I'm also going to have a real interesting talk this week with Keith from Tsunami Cables. And we're going to talk about a lot of myths. And you know I love busting the myths. Uh, we're going to talk about what is real about cables, how much they do matter, and if they matter, and all that kind of stuff. So it's going to be a real cool interview and a lot of good tech information in there. And last up, I am developing a preamp circuit inside of a pedal, and it's turning out really well. So uh, that's also going to get covered in the live stream for patrons, and more information will pop up on the main channel here later on, but you guys will get the inside skinny on it and everything, and uh, I think it could be something real cool. It's something I've wanted to do for quite a while. I don't know how big I can do it or get it out to anybody, but uh, I'm developing one for myself, and it's going better than I thought. So with all that said, well, let's get on the base and get a hack going. Okay, here's a really simple idea, and like I said, it's right in front of our face, and it's mostly because we tend to think just in what we're doing and continuing it all the time, and we tend not to switch up how we're approaching the instrument back and forth. When we're fretting notes, we tend to stay on fretted notes, go. And as soon as we wanna move up or change positions, we just try and rip to the next fretted note as fast as we can. And we forget the fact that we have these open strings. Take advantage of them. What an open string in the middle of a piece can do is give you that float time you need to be able to get around the neck. So let's check out a couple versions of this. So let's say we were doing something that moved up and down the neck a lot, it's kind of atonal and crazy and things. How can an open string in the middle of this pattern help us out? So you see what's going on here is I'm using an open string to fill that hang time in between when I get up around the upper part of the neck 
and it's helping that transition. It's filling that sonic hole and allowing me to make a pattern that is uninterrupted as I move up. Let's see what I'm doing. On the E string, I'm on the fifth fret, and then I'm doing the sixth fret on the A string. Then what I'm doing is hitting the open D string. So I'm going. While that note's ringing, I'm moving my hand up to hit the 14th on the D and the 16th on the G. So see, this is giving me that hang time I need. Cool idea, right? It's simple, it's right in front of our face, but because we're fretting all the time, we don't tend to think of going back to an open string. It takes a little bit of being conscious about your muting. And, you know, it's not really that hard, especially something like this where you're just moving back and forth. But it can have a nat pretty natural feel, too, because when I'm doing this, if you watch my hand here, I'm just moving across the strings. I'm not doing a sudden jump or anything. And that's the other cool thing it can help out with is it keeps you from having to do these rapid jumps and it helps you in that you can just move gradually across the neck instead of having to leap back and then forward and split your fingers up across you know string skipping type of ideas if you watch my right hand so that just flows real easy i'm just rolling up and back so you can use that in the middle of a pattern and you can use more than one open string. You can come up with all kinds of cool stuff. So I think it's probably becoming pretty obvious that it can have a lot of uses. You could try and experiment and do all kinds of things all day with it. You know, just things that uh, move from one end of the fingerboard all the way down or use multiple open strings gradually one step at a time as you're going down the neck. But it's a real simple hack and one we tend to overlook because we just don't think about open strings until we're at this end of the neck and maybe you're in E and you may ride on it for a minute or something, but we don't integrate open strings as part of our mostly fretted performance pieces. So putting that back in and remembering that that note is always available to you and then thinking about it at times when you need to get around the neck and which ones are in key and work inside your patterns you can get incredible amounts of smooth shifting interesting chord tones pivot ideas again there's a lot hidden in this and i hope you'll experiment with it a lot and really sit and come up with some things and if you do work with this and you come up with something especially cool, put a video of it. Link me down in the comments. I'd love to see that kind of thing. Uh, I'm always interested in how people approach their patterns differently maybe than I do and come up with something that I wouldn't have thought of, but based off of an idea we talked about on the show. So this is definitely a cool one. And since not a lot of people use it, you can create some kind of pretty scary and crazy things out of it that might shock and surprise people, or they'll just look at you and go, how the hell is he getting around like that? So use it wisely and enjoy. So that's going to wrap it up for this Monday. I hope this gives you something new to play with and work with and create some cool lines and fills and uh, just step up your chops a little bit. And uh, down in the comments, also, besides this idea, tell me, uh, have you checked out the Voice of Descent CD? I'd be interested to hear your reaction on some of it. And uh, like I said, took it down for a while. So if you have checked it out, I'd love to hear your feedback on it. Like I said, uh, in the recording project, I'm going to be retooling some of it and making some changes to some of those songs. So it'll be interesting to see the before and after. And as always, any kind of commentary conversation, you guys know I love geeking out on this stuff with you. So I will see you down there. Please like, share, and subscribe. It does help, and it helps keep the reach of the channel going. So until next time, I'll see you then.